What's up, everybody? How's it going? Have you ever been stuck in a coding interview? Get stuck? Or maybe you're getting ready for your coding interviews and you're terrified of the thought of getting stuck in a coding interview? Well, fear not, because in this video, I'm going to share with you two Clem certified tips on how you can get unstuck in a coding interview. Now, by the way, getting stuck in a coding interview can happen to anyone. If you're unprepared for the coding interview, although, by the way, if you're unprepared, step one would be to be prepared for the coding interviews. And for that, of course, you can use my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C L E M, for a discount on the platform. But you can also be someone who is prepared. Maybe you have gone through all of Algo Expert, you are prepared prepared and yet you still get stuck. That's not abnormal, it happens to the best of us, but you can deal with this situation. So now, let's jump into the first tip, and this one is probably my favorite one because it is guaranteed to get you unstuck. It works particularly well right now because most interviews right now with the pandemic are remote. You're doing them over video call. And so what you do if you are completely stuck in the coding interview is you fake having internet issues. Make it seem as though you're having a network problem, you have internet lag, so you can be like, can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? See what I did there? This tip works 100% of the time. Just kidding, please do not do that. That is a terrible tip, that is terrible advice. The only reason that I said it was because I wanted to get you to smash the like button on this video, so if you found it even remotely funny, remote, pun perhaps intended, then do smash the like button, but no, do not do this terrible piece of advice. They will see right through it. The actual tip number one is that I want you to reiterate out loud to your interviewer your entire thought process from the moment that the interview started all the way to the point where you got stuck. And here what I mean is that you're going to reiterate the problem statement, you're going to reiterate some of the important edge cases and constraints that were given to you along with the problem statement, you're going to reiterate the approaches that you considered going with to solve this problem, you're going to reiterate the data structures that you considered using, why you ended up not using them, or why you're thinking of maybe using them, you're going to reiterate everything that you went through all the way to the point where you got stuck. This is really important for two reasons. First of all, this can actually help unstuck you. There are a lot of times when just walking through this thought process will just get you unstuck. For example, you might be like, okay, so the problem gives us an array of integers and it wants us to do x, we're told that the array is sorted, and now we await oh, the array is sorted. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay, so the array is sorted, so we can use two pointers, yada, 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 right? So sometimes you literally will suddenly see something that you hadn't seen before. And sometimes it's even more random. For instance, you'll walk through the entire thought process, you'll still feel stuck, and at the very end you'll be like, and so here we've got our linked list pointer and wait. We just have to reverse the linked list, and that's it, and boom. Like, I'm not kidding. This actually happens. I've seen it happen in interviews. It's happened to me. I'm sure that it's happened to you while you were practicing on Algo Expert, for example. So just re-go through that thought process because it might make you see something that you didn't previously see. Now, the second reason that you want to reiterate your thought process out loud is because, and I've said this before many times on this channel, but the entire purpose of a coding interview is for the interviewer and their company, by extension, to get signal that you, the interviewee, are competent and qualified as a software engineer, right? And to do that, to get that signal, they need to get even more granular signal that you are a good problem solver, that you are a good communicator, that you are someone who can code well, who knows their algorithms and data structures well. They're trying to get all of this signal. And the best way to give them that signal is to talk out loud, to revoice your thought process, because you'll show that you're a good communicator, that you're a good problem solver, that you at least know some stuff about algorithms and data structures, because presumably you've gone through a few options. So it's just really useful to give them that signal. And on top of that, it'll also give them a good signal or a good idea of where it is that you're actually stuck. Because the worst thing that can happen in an interview if you are stuck is for the interview 
interviewer not to know why you're stuck and to have to make assumptions about why you're stuck. And usually they're going to assume the worst. They're going to assume that you're basically like, you know, you don't know anything about algorithms and data structures or that you're really, you know, incompetent. And oftentimes that's just not the case. So for example, maybe you forgot or you missed the fact that the input is a sorted array. And maybe that's the key to solving this problem. And if you reiterate your entire thought process and you fail to mention that it's a sorted array, they might be like, oh, okay, so this candidate is good. They just forgot that I told them that it was a sorted array. Or maybe they forgot to ask me if the array is sorted. And maybe, you know, you'll get dinged a little bit on that, on failing to ask them about the input. But the point is, you will give them the signal of why you're stuck, and that will often work in your favor. Furthermore, if you end up needing a hint, it'll help them tailor the hint that they're going to give you more appropriately to actually have it help you. Now, this brings me to the second tip that you can use if you're stuck in a coding interview, and you use this tip after you've applied tip number one. But here, this one assumes that you've gone through your entire thought process, you're at the very end, and you still don't know how to solve the problem. You're still stuck. You still don't realize that all that you have to do is reverse the damn linked list. And so in this case, what you're going to do is simply ask for a hint. Now, two things about this. First of all, it is very important for you to get out of your mind the misconception that if you need a hint in a coding interview, if you get a hint in a coding interview, you're doing terribly or you are failing the coding interview. No, 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 no. Comment down below. No. You are not failing just because you need a hint. In fact, there are some problems where it's expected that you'll need a hint because they're very difficult. And even problems that aren't as difficult as others, it's fine if you need a hint. Sure, it might be a tiny bit worse than if you didn't need the hint, that just kind of makes sense, but it doesn't mean that you're failing. There have been many interviews that I conducted at Google where the candidate needed a hint, or two hints, or even three hints, and I still ended up giving them a higher decision or a strong higher decision, and they still ended up getting hired. So that's the first thing to realize. Do not think that if you need a hint, you're failing. Also, if your interviewer is good, normally they will realize when they should give you a hint, and they'll help unblock you. Now, you might fall on an interviewer who's bad or an interviewer who's holding off their hints a little bit longer than they should be for whatever reason. In those cases, you ask for a hint. Now, the second thing that I was going to say about this is there are ways and ways of asking for a hint. I'm not suggesting that you just be like, hey, give me a hint. Or, you know, obviously you're not going to say that, but like, hey, I really need a hint because I'm completely stuck here. That's not necessarily the most appropriate way of asking for a hint. A couple of better ways that I would recommend are, for example, you've gone through the entire thought process, and at the very end you say, so these are the two approaches that I considered. Neither of them seemed sound because we still end up uh, with this obstacle that I can't seem to get past. Are you following my train of thought? Is what I'm saying making sense? See, that's a lighter way, a gentler way of asking them for a hint. Or another way that you might go about this is saying something like, so if we can't use a binary search tree, I'm just saying something random here, then we could just sort the array. But if we sort the array, then the solution becomes trivial, which means that we have trivially found an n log n time solution, because of the sorting, which means that I think there must be a linear time solution that we can come up with with something a little bit more clever. Am I completely off track here, or is what I'm saying logically sound? Again, that's another gentle way of nudging them to giving you a hint, but it's a lot more appropriate and respectful, in my opinion, than just flat out saying, hey, I really need a hint. And so at that point, hopefully, the interviewer is going to give you a hint. The hint will help unblock you. If it doesn't, you continue having a conversation with them, you reapply these tips, ideally it pushes you a little bit more forward, and then you end up acing the interview. And if you're still stuck, then you just go back to that very first tip where you fake having an internet issue. 
Just kidding, don't do that. So that's all I've got for you with this video. I hope that these two tips will help you if you ever get stuck in a coding interview. If you found this video insightful or if you found it a little bit funny, then do smash the like button. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. I'm almost or sort of almost at 100,000 followers on LinkedIn, so I would love it if you followed me there. Follow me on Instagram if you enjoy pictures and otherwise I will see you in the next video.